the difference between stem cell injections and how the X39 works in regard to reactivating your own stem cells? Massive difference. So, uh, so when we did our studies at uh, the Regenerative Medicine Institute in Ireland, uh, we were working with what are called MSCs. Uh, I often get uh, I, I often get comments about the way that I pr uh, pronounce this uh, mesenchymal stem cells. Uh, because that's how they pronounce it in Ireland. So that's how I pronounce it. But but the actual pronunciation is different. I'm also from New Jersey. So I have an accent and I'm going to mispronounce everything. So but uh, but MSE. So what we did was we took people over the age of 60 and uh, we cultured their uh, MSC stem cells. And what you see uh, is very consistent with the literature. There's about a 60 to 80 percent drop in motility and the ability of those MSCs to release growth factors like VEGF and IGF-1. So this is the problem that we all face, is that the stem cells, which are the universal cells in the body, are aging with the rest of us. So understandably, the path that uh, the pharmaceutical and medical device industry is going is say, well, we will take the stem cells from a young, healthy person and we'll inject them into someone that's older, and uh, that'll be great. Then a person can have younger cells. But it turns out it's not quite that easy. In the first study that was done in Japan, in an attempt to uh, treat Parkinson's disease, uh, stem cells were injected right into the brain of monkeys, and the monkeys died. And when um, they were opened up, it was found that inside the brain, there was muscle tissue, heart tissue, hair, bone. The stem cells differentiated in an uncontrolled fashion. So uh, you can see online today that there's a number of lawyers that actually specialize in this, where someone goes in for a stem cell injection, and all of a sudden now they have bone that appears in the corner of their eye, and it can't be surgically removed. So some of this is, is uh, permanent. So it's, it's a uh, very significant challenge in the stem cell community. It hasn't been completely, uh, this problem has not been completely addressed yet. So it's why you don't see the broad use of stem cells today. Um, now that said, there are people that do stem cell injections and uh, the majority of time they're safe. They're not always effective though. And the other issue is that, let's say you take a chronic injury, like someone has a problem, a torn rotator cuff, they're missing cartilage in their knees, um, you inject the stem cells, nothing happens. That's very, very common. And now someone spent three or $4,000, $5,000 for that injection. The reason is that stem cells are attracted to the inflammatory cytokines around the injury site and that's a good thing, but in a chronic injury, the stem cells are destroyed by that inflammation. So you get the injection, doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. wow. Where X39 is different, and also people that use X39 and Eon together with a chronic injury, is that copper peptide is able to manage the inflammatory process. And this is critically important. We need some inflammation in the body because it tears down old or unhealthy tissue, but if, if the levels are too high, we're achy, we're in pain, and the injury can't heal. So by injecting or uh, using the X39 patch and elevating copper peptide, the advantage is that you manage inflammation, you mobilize the stem cells, you can actually increase the number of the stem cells because they function, function as something called the Yamanaka factor. So you actually get an increase in the number of circulating stem cells and um, it's daily use and convenience. So instead of getting that injection and then a day later, the stem cells are gone, now you're using the X39 patch daily and it's doing it th its thing day to day. So it's why the X39 actually rivals the efficacy of an injection, but it's much, much safer. No, absolutely no chance of a side effect.